James McAvoy in his first fully improvised role. My Son is a remake of the 2017 French thriller Mon Garçon, starring Guillaume Canet. It was like being in a role-play game. I was moving through this story totally blind. Have you even thought? What sort of father you've been to your son? McAvoy stars as a father whose seven-year-old son goes missing from a campsite in an apparent kidnapping. Claire Foy plays his ex-wife. I think that the thriller genre is something that speaks to a lot of people, notably the Anglo-Saxon community. With no script, the goal was for the actor and the audience to uncover the mystery at the exact same time. I sat down with the director and his star to chat about this unusual project. We are investigating every hypothesis, including kidnapping. James McAvoy, hello. Hello. My Son is the remake of a French movie. Had you seen the original? No, luckily. Um, the director's approach is very uh, particular and improvisation-based, and me specifically, as the main actor, you get kept in the dark, you don't know what's going to happen next. So luckily, I hadn't seen the French version of the film, uh, otherwise <laughs> his process would have been up this morning. <laughs> But doesn't a scriptless film make established actors like yourself and agents a little bit nervous? No, 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 no. There is an outline, there is a story. I just don't know it. All the other actors, all the crew, the director, they all know it. Um, and in fact, they rehearse it for weeks before I even show up. Does it make an actor nervous? No, not me. I didn't really need much convincing. Didn't even need to talk to Christian before accepting the role. I feel like... I have paid people for an experience that is like this, but not as good, you know? Like, you go to some warehouse, and there's a bunch of actors, and there's some actors dressed up as zombies, and they're chasing you around, and you've got to decide whether you go down that corridor or that corridor, and it lasts for 20 minutes, and that's it. And it might be a, a thing where you've got to figure out how to get out of a room or something like that, you know what I mean? And it's thrilling and it's exciting. This was two weeks of that without the zombies. It was an easy yes. So how did it work? How much information were you given? I knew the shape of my life. I knew the shape of um, my character's relationship with Claire's character and with my son. I knew what job I did. I knew where I grew up. I knew what my parents were. I just, but I didn't know anything after the moment that the cameras start to roll. And uh, I mean, my first day on the job, I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning. I was given some coordinates to go to, so I got in the car which was my character's car, and I drove it to these coordinates. It turns out it was a ferry terminal. So I'd like, all right, I'll drive on the ferry, and I drive on the ferry, and of course the cameras are on the ferry rolling. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the start of the film. The idea behind my son was that of a man who is never there because of his work. But he is also running away from life. He is forced to return because his son has disappeared. His guilt from having neglected his son comes up to the surface. He does things that are at times borderline, all in the name of finding his son. This idea came to me about 20 years ago, but not the idea of keeping the script from the actor. At the time, I wanted to make a somewhat normal film, with a script, with read-throughs. For one reason or another, I changed my mind and I made it this way. Seeing as this man is never there, doesn't know anything, I thought, why not put the actor in the same conditions, that of not knowing anything? What sort of father you've been to your son? I know, I know. I know I'm a bad dad. I know I'm never here. I know he can't rely on me. It's not my fault he's gone missing, darling. Oh. Why James McAvoy? Well, for me, he's one of the most talented actors of his generation. I'm a fan of James McAvoy. 
Every time I see him on screen, I don't know what to expect, and I think him neither. He is, on one hand, a very instinctive actor, but also someone who does a lot of preparation. I wanted to put him in a situation where he couldn't prepare. All he had were four pages with his name, his job, and why he wasn't there for his son. Basically, everything we know about him before the film starts. So when the filming started, he had nothing. I wanted to see his reaction to that, what he would do. dangerous now. I need to wait. I'll leave in 20, I think. Okay. Don't try to ask me if this version is better than the one in French. It's like asking a mother if she prefers her son or daughter. It's impossible. My films are my children. I've experienced two things different. I had two different experiences, as we shot in two different locations. I think Scotland, the Highlands, really influenced us. It's a very peculiar place. It's always raining. I've never gotten so drenched on a film set in my life. Also, McAvoy is not Guillaume Kenny. They are two very different people. The story is similar. It's a new version of a story, but it's been updated as the actors and the locations are different. You're a dad in real life, you've got a son. How much did that influence um, you in the film? I don't think you need to be a father to be able to empathise or understand the, the nightmare that something like this would be. Um, and I don't think it's given too much about the film away to give away that his son has gone missing. Uh, I think that if you've got a decent enough imagination and, and a certain level of empathy, you can get it, you know. However, if you are a dad or you are a mum, I think perhaps it just makes it that bit more immediate. It just hits you in a physical way, almost like, almost the same way as it does when you see somebody get kicked in the between the legs, it hurts you, do you know what I mean? It's like the thought of it hurts you. And you'd know that if you asked about him, if you asked your son about him, but you don't, do you? Because you never fucking call and you never fucking do anything. You send a present on his seventh birthday. He doesn't even get the chance to talk to his dad. Have you even thought about what this all means? That your son's missing? Now, another film you made since COVID is called Together. Mm -hmm. um, a very different couple who have a son who are re-evaluating uh, yeah. their relationship. <laughs> they just announced the lockdown. We're getting through us. I hate your face. My face? I hate your face. Oh, you hate my face? It's just your face. I hate it. I was wondering, what effect has COVID had on your life? How has it changed you? Work slowed down for a little while, but then it seemed that with everybody streaming, um, we became an essential industry again, <laughs> and suddenly we were allowed to make movies uh, and make TV shows. So then work got busy again. We used to travel tons, used to socialise tons, used to go out to bars and restaurants all the time. That's all kind of gone away. Luckily, it's been a nice summer, and it's been really nice. We've got a place in Philadelphia where we've been at the moment for the last couple of months, and uh, the weather's still great there, so you can eat outdoors, which is fantastic, and we're doing loads of that. But uh, you just relied on your immediate circle or bubble. And that, strangely, was lovely because we got, I guess, certain relationships have deepened and intensified and really grown um, that maybe wouldn't have had the opportunity and the time to otherwise, you know? What I feel for you, it's so weird. Are you trying to say you love me? Well, I'm trying to say I sort of love you. Home. What can you tell us about the third series, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials? Hopefully it's going to be as good as the third book, uh, which is one of the most difficult books of the three, I think. But they've done such a great job at adapting it. And I've already done, I think, the first 
three or four episodes and I'm going back uh, next month to finish off and do the last couple of episodes. It would be fun to take Azrael full circle because he's such a, he's such an arse and he's got a great journey. But it's not one of those like gradual arcs. It's sort of like goes up a mountain and just drops off it with his arc. So the way it ends for him is, is pretty appropriate and beautiful and really sad and tragic at the same time. Okay, James McAvoy, thank, thank you. you. Consider me your code breaker. Day after day, I'm ready to go on air at any moment to help you make sense of the news we report. I'm here to go live on set with analysis of the most important events of the day, often as they occur, and to provide clarity to our viewers. At France 24, I work closely with the duty editor to give perspective to the big international news stories of the day. My job is to follow international news and current affairs on a daily basis, to better understand and analyse the historical, geopolitical, economic and environmental importance of the world's major news stories. On France 24, in-depth analysis of all the news from our international affairs editors. Liberté, égalité, actualité.